at Internet Friends. My name is John and welcome to episode 13 in my series of how to create a website using Umbraco V8. Now in today's video we're going to be looking at the super cool and very powerful grid list editor property. Now the reason why this property is so super cool is because it allows content editors the ability to create dynamic layouts within the CMS and this will be possible all through the use of blocks. So what will happen is a content editor will be able to pick from a range of blocks. They will decide what blocks they want to appear on a page, the order of those blocks, and this is going to help them write more compelling content, which will hopefully make your website more popular and successful. Now, one word of caution with this property is the grid list editor is only available in Umbraco 8.9 onwards. So you'll either have to upgrade to Umbraco 8.9 if you want to use this property. Otherwise, you know, this video might not be for you, unfortunately. However, you should definitely do it because it's a cool property. So in this video, what we're doing is showing you how to use it on a document type and also be showing you some good coding techniques so we can use MVC with it as well. Now, if you like this sort of content and you want to be an absolute legend, hit that subscribe button. I would very much appreciate it. Now, assuming you've hit subscribe, let's have a look at this property in detail. What you are witnessing on the screen right in front of you is the output of the grid list editor in action. And what you can see is a very simple grid with three components, one called black, one called red, and one called blue. I'm using a 80s neon inspired theme, so it's hopefully really obvious what's going on. What we're gonna do is work our way backwards, look at how the page is constructed, and then look at the document types. I've kept all the naming convention the same, so it should be really obvious what is going on. So looking at the page within the content tree, you can see I've got this page called grid, and I've got this area here. And this is the property in action you can see the corresponding components right here, black, red, and blue. So by selecting a component and dragging it up and down, I can reposition it. So if I did a save and publish, looking back at my page, you can see that it's been updated in real time just by clicking that save and publish button. Now, when I click on a component right on the far right hand side, you can see I've got the option to either delete it or to clone it. I can also add in new components by clicking on the add content button. Nice. Now you may be wondering where do these blocks come from? How do I create one? I will get to that now. So click on the big settings tab. A block is basically just a document type. The only difference between a block and a document type is basically go to this permissions tab. And in here you can see is an element type ticked. And this basically means it's a block. And this is the only difference between a document type and a block. So creating a block is exactly the same as creating a document type. Good news. Now, the one thing you need to be aware of when you're creating these blocks is how to add them onto a page. And this is done through the block list editor property. So this is the document type that for the grid page that we saw. Clicking on this block list editor, we can see its properties. It's made up of the Umbraco block list as the property type. Now, the color block editor is a data type that I've created myself. So the data type will define what blocks that can be um, the content editors can use. So if I wanted to add a new block, I just add it like that. There's some other properties we can add, you know, like the amount of blocks that can be created or the live editing mode. I'll allow you to play around with that. But however, you should get the gist. It's fairly simple to get this property up and running. So the next thing we'll do is look at how the views for the blocks are rendered out. The corresponding view files for the blocks will be found within the view folder of. However, the property does split the views into two types. Now on the screen, I'm hoping you can see this partials block list default CSHTML. Now this file is actually used by the plugin and this is the thing which actually renders out all the blocks. So we'll be updating this shortly to make it work in a slightly nicer way. And as you can see, I've created another area, this block list folder. And in here we've got components. And this is where the corresponding black, blue, and red block HTML lives. I have some sad news. You cannot use route hijacking with your view files within the block list editor. This means that the model type that you have to use will be of type block list item. And this actually really limits what we can do within our view. Now, as you saw in the CMS, blocks are document types. The only big difference is that is element checkbox is enabled. 
What this means is we can use model builder and we can generate strongly typed models the way we can every other document type. So if we wanted to use our model builder within the block list view, we're going to have to write code which is similar to the one on the screen in front of us. So as you can see here, I'm newing up this red block type. And just for a contrived example, I want to add some logic. Now, because I'm passing in this block list item, the only way that I can do my logic is within the view. And it also means I need to remember to put my semicolons in, otherwise the page will explode. So this makes me sad. However, we can customize that default CS HTML to work slightly different, and this will allow us to use route hijacking. In order to be able to inject our own custom view models into our block item views, we're gonna to have to create a custom controller. And funny enough, we have an example of one on the screen in front of us. Now, the first thing I should note is that it's inheriting from normal controller. So this means that we're gonna to have to add in a custom rule within the routing table before this controller will work. So I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Now I've created an action and it's taking in two the parameters. Now the reason why we're using iPublishElement is because this is what we get access to within that default CS HTML file that we talked about earlier. So we'll have to update that in order for this to work. And the other parameter we're passing in is the block alias. So using this block alias, we can then create our view models. Now, one thing to be aware of is that when we're using the models created by the model builder, you'll notice that the backing type is published element model. Hmm. Now, this is very different than normal pages, which will use the published content model. So if you saw my video on view models, you may need to update your composed view model to ensure that you have one which works with the published element model as well. So if I go back here, you might be able to see what I'm talking about. If I do a peak definition, you can see that I've got the exact same composed view model, published element view model, but this time the T block is now published element model. So slightly different, but same thing. Now, looking back in our create view model, you can see that logic, which was beforehand baked into our view, is now in the right place in our controller. So things are beautiful. And now we're just passing in the partial view name and we're figuring out the partial view name to use by using the alias. So assuming that we want to look at the red block, I'm gonna go into block list components and then we've got the red block component. In here, you can see that I'm now using model rather than the block list item being passed in. This means that I've got no custom logic now within my block item view and everything is at one with the world. In order for the block list editor to be able to talk back to our controller, we're gonna to need to put a rule within the routing table. Now, this is done using a component. If you are new to components, then I recommend you check out my component and composers video because all of this is explained in detail there. For this video, let's just look at the rule. So our rule here defines a name, which is called block controller. It can be anything. The rule starts with block. It has an action, it has an item, and it has an alias within the segment. So this makes up the URL, which will be a successful match. So we can see how this should map up. So we have controller, which equals block, action, index, and we have two parameters, one called item and one called alias. Let's look at our block controller. So controller called block, action called index, parameter one, item, parameter two, alias. Rule covered. The final part of the puzzle is to update our default property list editor behavior to call our custom controller rather than directly render out the views instead. And this is done by updating that default CS HTML file that I keep banging on about. So just in case you've forgotten, you can find this file within views, partial, block list, default, CS, HTML. Now, as you can see, the inheriting type is of this block list model. We have this for each loop, and in here you can see that the type is of block list item. So what we wanna do is use this item to call our controller on each iteration. So we'll do that by updating the code to have a HTML action. We're gonna have a index and a block. So this mirrors up with that rule we just looked at. We're passing in the item parameter, and this is done by simply typing the data to iPublishElement. 
and we can get the alias by just doing a data content type alias. And what this means is that when the property is rendering out, it's going to keep calling our controller. And from there, we now have a lot more control because we can create our own view models and we can determine and create nicer views. So we're winning. And that is pretty much everything that you need to know in order to start getting your hands dirty with the block list editor. What do you think of this property? Please leave your comments below. Personally, I think this property is ace and I recommend that you use it. I'm hoping that you can see the power that it gives content editors to create these dynamic pages. Also from this video, I'm hoping you now understand how you can add this property onto a document type. I'm hoping you can see that it's really easy to create blocks. And I'm also hoping that you can see with that small code tweak within default CSHTML, it's much easier to use your own view models and controllers because it will result in cleaner code. Hmm. Anyway, I'm hoping you have enjoyed this video. If you like this sort of content and you want to be a legend, you know that drill. Hit the subscribe button. It means that you'll get to see these videos weekly. If you want to do me a massive solid and you want to trick YouTube into showing this video to more people, click that like button. Also, my Umbraco book, it is finally finished. It has taken me about six months, seven months. It's about 100, 150 pages. It's only $9.99. If you want to learn everything about Umbraco, this is the best condensed book that I've seen. I know I'm biased because I've written it. However, I have put a lot of time and effort into making sure that you will learn everything about V8. Anyway, I'm hoping you found this video insightful. I hope you have an amazing week. And as always, happy coding.